Hey guys, Mike in the woods here. Look, I'll be upfront about it. I've never owned a truck. I've never really been a truck guy. Currently, I own a Mazda 3 hatchback that gets nervous sweats if it even sees a dirt road. However, I am a Tesla guy. I'm a day one reservation holder on the Tesla Cybertruck, so I make sure to stay up to date on all news and information regarding the Cybertruck and Tesla as a whole. So from that perspective, here's 10 myths that you as a non-Tesla person probably believe about the Tesla Cybertruck. And before we get started, you knew it was coming. Subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like button if this is interesting, and leave any questions you have down below. Let's get into the video. Myth number 10, there's no demand. Whether specifically for the Cybertruck or Teslas in general, I hear this one a lot. At the time of recording, there's estimated to be over a million reservations on the Cybertruck. Now, a fair point could certainly be made at the fact that the reservation fee is only $100, or $150 if you live in Canada like I do, and that number is inflated by people who have no plans to follow through, especially when the reservation fee is completely refundable on cancellation. However, think of it this way. If you had no intention on buying one, why would you plunk down money on a reservation? Especially when you consider that pre-orders on vehicles is a very uncommon practice in the automotive industry. I think it might be safe to say that anyone who's at least put a pre-order down is, at the very least, interested in purchasing one, financial capability notwithstanding. If we say maybe two-thirds of the reservations cancel due to whatever reason, maybe for financial reasons caused by our ongoing pandemic, that's still a 33% conversion rate. That's over 333,000 conversions expected now, let alone whatever the reservation count is at by the time they enter production. As for the demand for Teslas in general, you gotta ask yourself this. If there was such a low or declining demand, why would they be spending so much money increasing manufacturing output, what with factories in China, Germany, and new ones in the US, while still managing to sell every vehicle they produce? Myth number nine, the battery pack placement makes the underside vulnerable. This one comes about because the Cybertruck's battery pack just like any other electric vehicle, is along the bottom of the truck in the skateboard. Now, for whatever reason, some people assume that it's just this battery pack hanging out under there with minimal to no protection whatsoever. On a normal Tesla, not a Cybertruck, just a run-of-the-mill Tesla, it has a three-layer shield system that consists of a hollow aluminum bar for deflection, a titanium plate for direct armor, and a solid aluminum extrusion that's angled to try and ramp the Tesla over whatever's trying to puncture it as a last resort. And this is just for a normal Tesla. If we look at the Cybertruck, you can see that the stainless steel body is actually an exoskeleton, meaning that what you see is actually the load-bearing frame of the truck, not just exterior paneling. And this includes the underside of the truck as well. Not to mention, Tesla knows this vehicle is going to be used for some crazy off-road purposes, so I really don't think they're going to let the most critical component of an electric vehicle go unattended by their engineers. At the time of this video, we don't have exact specifications, but Tesla has historically had some of the best automotive engineering talent in the world. I think it's safe to say that a lot of engineering hours have paid attention to this particular concern. Myth number eight, Tesla's batteries frequently catch on fire. To me, this is the most absurd one on the list. For whatever reason, whenever there is a Tesla that manages to catch on fire, it gets all of the media attention, even though there's many, many, many more gas-based car fires daily. In fact, current statistics point to Tesla's being approximately 10 times less likely to catch on fire than gas-based cars. Like I mentioned in the previous point, Tesla has put a lot of engineering into protecting the battery pack from being damaged, but it's not just that. They've also put a lot of time and money into ensuring that even if the battery pack does get punctured, the risk of fire is as reduced as possible. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but guys, if it's a car just like any other that has to meet the same safety requirements as any gas-based vehicle. Myth number seven, the final version will look nothing like the prototype. With this one, I can understand where people are coming from. Even the most die-hard Tesla fanboy will agree with you that the aesthetics of the truck are wonky AF. But that doesn't mean that it's not road legal. Now, mind you, there are some valid criticisms of the prototype that indeed are not road legal. The three major ones being the lack of side mirrors, the lack of wiper blades, and the design of the steering wheel. 
Talos of EV has done a great breakdown on this. I'll link to his video in the description if you want a more detailed breakdown of everything on the prototype that needs to change. The TLDR is though, that these are just extraneous changes that will either have the laws change in their favor by the time the Cybertruck enters production, such as the ongoing push to have cameras replace the use of side mirrors, or the design itself will change to accommodate the legal requirements as needed. But the fundamental design of the truck, the materials, the appearance, the dimensions, the exoskeleton body, do not appear to be in violation of any road regulations, at least insofar as North America is concerned. Myth number six, it will be stupidly expensive. Most people who have paid attention to the Cybertruck already know the price point, but I'm surprised at just how many people think that all Teslas are just still stupidly expensive. Most of you guys already know this, but Tesla's mission statement from the beginning has been to make an affordable electric car, and the most important avenue for doing that is via economies of scale. The long story short is that they moved progressively from low volume, high cost vehicles down to high volume, low cost vehicles as the production of batteries increased and the price fell through the floor and still continues to do so to this day. The price of a Model 3 and Model Y for those who have never bothered to look at the price of them is probably lower than they think and the Cybertruck even more so. If you've never seen the price of the Cybertruck, here's the price breakdown. The single motor, rear wheel drive, 250 plus mile range starts at 39,900 USD. The dual motor, all wheel drive, 300 plus mile range starts at 49,900 USD. And the tri motor, all wheel drive, 500 plus mile range starts at 69,900 USD. So you might ask, how can Tesla get the price so low? Myth number five, the design is only for aesthetic reasons. One myth I see get pushed around a lot is that the Cybertruck is intentionally designed to look like a DeLorean's inbred cousin. No, that's not why it looks the way it does. Though weird looking, the shaping of the truck is actually a byproduct of the engineering decisions that went into it. Based on what I understand, the fundamental driving principle behind what Tesla wanted to achieve with the Cybertruck was to create a electric pickup truck that was as cheap to manufacture as possible without sacrificing capability or safety. And as a result, the aesthetics took a backseat. Let's look at the exoskeleton design. Rather than have a separate frame from the exterior paneling, they combined it together where the exterior is the frame. From what's been stated, essentially they're taking a giant sheet of super tough stainless steel, so strong that it actually breaks panel stamping presses from traditional cars, and essentially folding it up origami style into the truck frame and welding it together. And with this method, they can't curve or shape the metal easily, leaving it with flat surfaces and an angled polygonal look. And they took this approach because it drastically cuts out a lot of complexity in manufacturing, something Tesla has been trying to achieve with their other models quite aggressively. And what this means is not only a decrease in the manufacturing time, letting them get more manufacturing output for the same amount of resources, but also a huge drop in the cost of the manufacturing process. This lets them stuff in a lot more batteries to give it the advertised range, while most importantly, being able to deliver at such a low price point. Myth number four, it will be extremely heavy. There is a real statement that most electric vehicles weigh more than their gas-powered counterparts due to the nearly solid metal battery pack. Keyword, most. Remember the point about simplifying the design into an exoskeleton? Not only did this simplify manufacturing time and cost, but it also cuts out a lot of the excess materials that would otherwise go into having a separate interior and exterior. And with less materials comes a far lighter frame to counteract the heavy battery pack. And with this balancing act, the Cybertruck is stated to be around the same weight as its similarly sized gas-powered competition. And this is important because off-road, a far heavier weight would have the truck sink into the dirt and mud rather than being able to gain grip and move. It also keeps the center of gravity low and helps a lot with the range. Myth number three, it's unsafe for collisions. When people see the design, people get concerned that the stainless steel exoskeleton design means it will be way too rigid for collisions, leading to serious injury or worse. Keep in mind that one of Tesla's main goals is to make some of the safest vehicles on the road. And if you look at their track record, it doesn't disappoint. They frequently top the charts in terms of safety. Now, I know some of you guys watching this are thinking, that's because there's no engine in the front. And you'd be exactly right. No engine up front makes for a much bigger crumple zone. And the Cybertruck is the same as any other Tesla. It's an electric vehicle with no engine in the front. So it, too, will feature a large crumple zone. 
just look at where the driver is seated versus the front of the truck. Just because the frame is made of stainless steel, that doesn't mean it won't be designed in a way to efficiently and safely crumple in an impact to absorb impact energy. Again, remember that they have to follow the same stringent guidelines as everyone else. And with Tesla's focus on safety, they refuse to do any vehicles like motorcycles, which are inherently dangerous, so you can pretty much be sure that they'll pay the same level of attention to the Cybertruck safety as all of their other models. Myth number two, it won't be practical. While the practicality of a vehicle depends entirely on the specific needs of the person buying, I've seen some statements that the Cybertruck won't be practical at all, and that it's just a goofy looking triangle truck with no real use. Either they haven't heard the specs, or they think that they're grossly exaggerated. Remember that the aesthetics took a back seat to the truck's capabilities. If it's going to look like this, you can be sure that they're going to double down on its capabilities. We'll ignore things like the 0-60 to 60 time and the Cybertruck towing an F-150 stuff, as we both know that that's just a marketing gimmick, and in my opinion, actually serves to degrade the Cybertruck's image rather than showcase it. We will take a look at the relevant specs. For range, you get between 250 plus miles, that's 402 kilometers, from the single motor option, all the way up to 500 plus miles, or 804 kilometers with the tri-motor design. For the payload capacity, it's stated at 3,500 pounds. For the tow rating, it's between 7,500 pounds and 14,000 pounds, depending on your chosen model. It's got a full-size 100 cubic foot bed, complete with a metal vault door covering that can be outfitted with solar panels. It's got a 35 degree approach angle and a 28 degree departure angle, a low center of gravity, up to 16 inches of ground clearance, and a 12 inch to 18 inch suspension travel with adaptive air suspension. So then the reply to that is, yeah, well, Tesla probably won't deliver on those specs. Myth number one, Tesla won't deliver on the advertised specs. Think back on everything I've just discussed. Their chosen design, the simplification of the manufacturing process, and how everything has gone into the functionality of the vehicle with the aesthetics being of no concern. The truck has to deliver on those specs as that's the only thing it has going for it. No one is buying it because it looks pretty. And when you take a look at every model reveal that has hit production so far, the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and the Model Y, Tesla has not only hit the announced specifications, but in some cases, quietly exceeded them. Tesla is a bit of a weird beast in that it often seems to intentionally understate specs for upcoming vehicles rather than overstate. And what you get is vehicles performing on par or better than what customers thought they were getting, and at least in my opinion, is one of the critical factors as to why Tesla is absolutely exploding in market share and popularity with zero conventional marketing. Actions over words. And Sandy Munro has actually done an excellent video explaining how and why Tesla does this, and I really suggest going to check out that video if you want to know more, link in the description. So if you don't think they'll deliver, just take a look at their track record of announced specs versus delivered specs. So, 10 myths about the Cybertruck that I've tried to set straight. I'm not trying to make it sound like the Cybertruck is the be-all, end-all truck to own all trucks. I just know that there's a lot of misinformation out there, both about the Cybertruck and Tesla in general. So hopefully this sets the record straight. If you're still not convinced, make sure you subscribe, because I'll be hopefully one of the first Canadian customers to take delivery of my dual motor Cybertruck. I reserved one on the day of the reveal, and I'm close to Toronto. I also take a look at other ways that new technology can intersect with traditional outdoors experiences, so consider checking out my other videos as well. Hit the like button if you learned something new, leave any questions you have down below, and if you want to help out the channel, check out the links in the description, I have an online 3D print and paracord shop, as well as a Patreon. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you next video.